Hello and welcome. I'm Davis DeWitt, and in this episode, I channeled my inner James Bond in order to build this completely self-powered grenade for an upcoming movie. This project has been one of my favorites, and I employed some clever tricks in order to pull this off. So to show you what those are, let's first jump over to the whiteboard. All right, ah, that's way more comfortable. So. Let's talk about design. Now, the shot that we need to accomplish is we have an insert and the smoke grenade is supposed to roll up, blowing smoke the whole time, and stop on an exact mark every single take. Now, there's a couple different ways you could do that. You could do fishing line or magnets or something, but that's not fun. And I want something that is a challenge to build and would look great on set. Now, in typical showbiz fashion, what the director says goes, and the design that he has settled on is something that looks like a typical smoke grenade. So the question then becomes, how do we make this work? First up, this grenade is going to be on screen, so it needs to look at least mostly accurate. Secondly, this needs to be functional in the sense that this is a smoke grenade, so smoke needs to actually come out. To do that, I'm going to use a vape pen cartridge inside the grenade so that I can generate a cloud of smoke and then having a fan actually blow that smoke out of the hole in the top. This is better than a chemical or dry ice smoke effect because, first of all, I can turn it on and off whenever I want, and more importantly, it's much safer. Last but not least, this whole assembly needs to be able to roll up and stop on an exact mark. So the concept that I'm going to be using is essentially thinking of this as a large hamster ball. And when a hamster runs inside of the ball, even though he isn't moving outside of the ball, the whole assembly moves as he runs. For this project, instead of using a trained hamster inside of the smoke grenade, what I'm gonna build instead is a set of two motors that are remote controlled so that when I wanna go forward, they spin inside of the housing and then the whole thing moves forward. Now an idea is only as good as its prototype, so I'm gonna jump over into my CAD program and design a prototype so we can test this. If I wasn't already on some FBI watch list, I definitely am now because the research I had to do for this project involved looking up a lot of different grenades. However, once we finally settled on a design, I created as close a replica as I could with an easily removable top and bottom. From there, I sent everything off to my 3D printer and started assembling my proof of concept using some hot glue and zip ties. Since this was just a test, I didn't wire anything together quite yet. Instead, I wanted to see how the components would balance on the wheels themselves. Now, my initial plan was to have all the heavy components on the bottom and the electronics and vape cartridge on the top. However, the motors ended up being too far below the center of gravity, preventing the entire assembly from self-leveling. To solve this, I swapped the placement of the motors to the top of the tray while leaving the batteries on the bottom, and as you can see, the new weight distribution was working much better. In order to accommodate the new motor position though, I had to now use gears, as the wheels would be too tall and thus block the smoke as it tries to exit the grenade. Inside the housing, these gears slot into a cutout in the top and bottom lid, allowing for the entire grenade to rotate around the motors, propelling it either forward or backward. With that sorted, I focused on finding the smallest electronics I could. Using the truly tiny DRV8833 motor driver and the equally small Seed SAMD21 microcontroller, I wired together a quick test to ensure the motors played nicely with my transmitter before soldering everything on to a protoboard. And while a protoboard is great for quickly combining components, the next time I have to build one of these, I will absolutely be turning to this episode's sponsor, PCBWay, to have a custom circuit board made instead. With dozens of options for PCB prototyping, 3D printing, CNC machining, and more, PCBWay makes it incredibly easy to bring whatever it is you're working on to life. To learn more and to support the people who support me, check out the link in the description. Anyways, back to the build. So it's finally time to test our prototype of this remote control smoke grenade, and I have our little carriage built here, which has the custom proto board with all of our electronic components on it. So now, in theory at least, when I put this inside of our housing, which we have, and move the motor, it should drive the direction that I want it to. So what I'm gonna do is take our batteries, our 18650s, and they go into the little battery cage on the back here. We'll put these in place. And now it looks like everything's powering up, which is a good sign. So I'm just gonna test our motors here. And it looks like they're spinning. And then this whole component goes inside of our little plastic smoke grenade mock-up. Screw on the lid. One thing I did notice when designing this prototype is that I designed the tolerances a little too tight. So if I actually screw these caps all the way on, it compresses that carriage and it won't spin. So I have to leave them a little bit loose for this test, but to show you kind of what we're going with here, I should be able to now <laughs> drive this across my table. 
<laughs> I can play with this all day long. Now it's a little rough around the edges and that's only because this is a 3D printed prototype. The only thing left to work on besides the paint is going to be getting the actual smoke effect working. So I'm waiting on a few parts to come in and once those arrive, I can hopefully design the part of this mechanism that will actually blow the smoke out of the top of the grenade and make this look like a real prop. So in the meantime, I'm gonna go dial in the rest of these components, start working on painting, and then we'll see where things go. With testing complete, I updated the design to include removable motor mounts that help maintain proper gear alignment during assembly and operation. Below that sits the pair of 18650 batteries, which act as a pendulum, keeping the whole assembly level and preventing it from spinning freely inside the grenade. Now, obviously size and weight were major concerns for this project, so I had to find the smallest form factor available for every component. And while I considered building a vape atomizer from scratch, this completed assembly caught my eye since it included a small pump to drive air through the atomizer and out the top. Normally I would design a proper mount for it, but sometimes the path of least resistance is the best, so I just made a small stand at the front and glued the whole thing in place. To turn the smoke on and off, I wired everything to a MOSFET trigger connected to my transmitter, which allowed me to safely control the power to the heating element and fan at the same time. In order to ensure all the smoke was directed out the channel at the top of the grenade, I made a fan shroud with a small opening that lined up exactly with the exit vent on the lid. With that in place, I applied a bit of gaff tape around the fan shroud and vape cartridge to keep any remaining smoke from leaking out. And while it doesn't necessarily look pretty, it does work, which is honestly all you can ask for on a project like this. Now that all the internals were complete, I ran one last test before moving on to painting the outer shell. As with every project, my least favorite part is always the endless sanding, priming, and masking I have to do in order to achieve a nice smooth finish that the paint can stick to. After letting a few coats of paint dry overnight, my reward was finally getting to peel off all the layers of masking tape that had kept the threads clear of paint on the top and bottom lids. From there, I applied some epoxy to the bottom of the 3D printed fuse assembly and stuck it to the top lid so the whole thing could be assembled as one. Our paint job is all finished, and as you can see, we've opted for a glossy black appearance because the director wanted to have a reflective surface so it would kind of, uh, you know, catch the light on set. And next up is going to be adding the decals to make this look like a real smoke grenade and not just a amorphous blob. So to do that, I'm going to use my vinyl cutter to cut out all the text and graphics that I want for this smoke grenade. And once that's complete, I can then put everything onto this grenade body and do some weathering effects so that it looks like a real grenade. Please don't flag me, YouTube. To contrast the glossy black paint, I opted for the same matte white permanent vinyl I've used on other projects like my Safecracker build since it holds up to the weathering process and doesn't peel. After all the text was cut out, I very carefully weeded the extra material away and applied transfer tape to maintain the correct alignment of everything when sticking it onto the grenade body. This part was incredibly tedious given the small text and it took a couple of tries to get the positioning right on the curved surface. As for the text itself, the director didn't want anything that resembled an existing piece of military hardware, so I came up with some fake model names instead. With that complete, it was now time to strategically ruin my nice paint job by roughing up the exterior using my Dremel and some sandpaper. This is always one of the best ways to make a prop look convincing, since any object that interacts with the real world will show some signs of wear. By recreating that, I can make sure this grenade doesn't look out of place when it appears on screen. Now that the exterior is finished, I can finally reassemble everything and show you the completed build. And with that, this little guy is finally ready for his big moment on screen. Plus, the best part is, using the same internals, I can just redesign this outer shell to look like any variety of different grenades, and the whole thing will still be remote control. Now, there's plenty of things that I would change if I had to do this again, but the beautiful thing about film is that sometimes you just have to make something and put it out into the world. At the end of the day, though, perfect should never be the enemy of better, and to me, the fun part is all the problem solving that goes into bringing a project like this to life.
Of course, there were many aspects to this build I didn't have time to cover in this video. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer as many as I can. On that note, thank you so much for watching and be sure to stay tuned for future builds.